Hello, good evening students, everybody. Welcome to kabtv.net. Till yesterday, we discussed about root and stem. We discussed the total lesson and some bits, important bits regarding that. From today onwards or now, we discuss some of the important bits in leaf and also in fluorescence. First, we discuss some important bits in the leaf. First question, monocot plants having reticulate venation. Monocot plants having reticulate venation are Smilax and Dioscoria. We all know this, Smilax and Dioscoria. Smilax and Colophyllum, Eryngium and Smilax, Colophyllum and Eryngium are given only to confuse you. So, normally reticulate venation is found in dicots. Reticulate venation is normally found in dicots. But there is some exceptions like Smilax and Dioscoria. These two are exceptions where these two are monocots with reticulate venation. Monocots with reticulate venation. So, this is an important bit. Monocot plants with reticulate venation are Smilax and Dioscoria. Next question. This is a matching tabular form. Answer. Answer. Monocot plant having reticulate venation is Smilax. So, A is 4. Dicot plant having parallel venation is Dicot plant having parallel venation is 2. Eryngium. Eryngium and Colophyllum are two dicots with parallel venation. Monocot plant having divergent palmate venation. Divergent palmate venation is found in Boraces. You all know divergent palmate venation means palmate means many midribs are present. And all these midribs ultimately enter their independent lobes like this. So, this type of venation is found in Boraces. Then dicot plant having convergent palmate venation. Convergent palmate venation. A dicot plant with convergent palmate venation is convergent palmate venation means many prominent midribs are present at the base, but ultimately they come and unite at the apex and remaining veins are arranged in a reticulate manner. For this, the examples are two. One is Zizipus, the other is Cinnamomum. Zizipus and Cinnamum. Zizipus, Zuzuba, you all know. Here, stipules are modified into spines and leaf will show palmately convergent reticulate venation. And Cinnamomum is a special economically important plant where the bark is used as a spice. In cinnamomum, bark is used as a spice. So, answer for this second question is third option. 4, 2, 1, 3. Next. Single leaf <coughs> showing many modifications is found in. Single leaf. Single leaf showing many modifications is found in. Single leaf showing many modifications is found in. <coughs> Nepenthes. Why? Because Nepenthes is an insectivorous plant. The lower part of the leaf modifies into a green chlorophylla structure called phyllod which performs photosynthesis. The upper part of the petiole is modified into a tendril. The upper part of the petiole is modified into a tendril. The lower part of the petiole is modified into a broad expanded green colored special photosynthetic structure called phyllod. Then Leaf lamina is modified into a cup-like structure called pitcher. Leaf lamina is modified into a cup-like structure called pitcher. <coughs> the rim of the pitcher shows special nectary glands which secrete slippery juices. The leaf apex is modified into an immovable, colorful, attractive lid. So, lower part of the petiole has become phyllot, upper part of the petiole has become tendril. Total leaf lamina is modified into a cup like structure called pitcher. Leaf apex, this lid has come from leaf apex. So, leaf apex is modified into a special lid. Lid attracts the insects, insect comes and sits on this. Because it is slippery, they fell into it. Downwardly bent hair does not allow the insects to come out. At the base, an acidic fluid is there. Ultimately, insect is.
killed. So, mm, leaf shows maximum modifications or the question is single leaf showing many modifications is found in answer is nepenthes. Answer is nepenthes, not citrus, delonyx and datura. Next question. This is again matching. Unifoliate leaf appears like a simple leaf citrus. Unifoliate leaf appearing like a simple leaf is citrus. Why? Because here only one leaflet is present at the tip of the petiole. Petiole is also winged petiole. Petiole is winged petiole. So, unifoliately compound leaf with winged petiole is citrus. Leaf lamina with pinnate lobes. Leaf lamina with pinnate lobes is brassica. Pinnate lobes means equal number of lobes on both sides of the midrib. Leaf lamina with palmate lobes. Leaf lamina with palmate lobes means leaf lamina shows lobes that resembles fingers in a palm. For this, the example or answer is passive flora. Then comes leaf lamina without lobes. That means total simple leaf that is first one cidium. So, answer is 4, 3, 2, 1. Unifoliate leaf appearing like a simple leaf is citrus. Leaf lamina with pinnate lobes is brassica. What is pinnate lobe? Suppose this is the midrib lobes will be like this and their number is equal on both sides of the midrib. This is called simple leaf with pinnate lobes. Simple leaf with palmate lobes means leaf lamina shows lobes which resembles fingers in a palm passiflora. Leaf lamina without lobes means all the leaves, all the leaves are simple without any lobes, example cidium. Next, arrange the following in ascending order based on the number of rachi per leaf. Ajad recta only one rachis that is primary rachis. Leaflets are arranged on both sides of the primary rachis is azad recta. For example, in azad recta only one rachis will be there. Leaflets are arranged on both sides of the rachis. This is azad recta. Then second is D, delonyx. Delonyx is primary rachis produce secondary rachis. On both sides of the second rachis, leaflets are arranged. On both sides of the second rachis, leaflets are arranged. Next is C, Moringa. So, this is azad recta, neem. This is delonyx. Then, Moringa. Moringa is drumstick. Here, primary rachis produces secondary rachis. Second rachis produces tertiary rachis and leaflets are arranged on both sides of the tertiary rachis. Leaflets are arranged on both sides of the tertiary rachis. So, here primary rachis, here second rachis, here tertiary rachis. Now, coming to the last one, coriandrum. Coriandrum, here the rachis is very much divided, numerous rachis will be there and highly dissected leaflets are present at the tip of terminal rach. So, based on the number of rachi, the arrangement is 1 in azad recta, 2 in delonyx, 3 in moringa, many in coriander. So, arrange the following in ascending order from lower number to higher number. Ascending order means based on the number of rachi per leaf is B, D, C, A that is azad recta, delonyx, moringa and coriander. Next. Estivation, only dicots show reticulate venation. Colophyllum shows parallel venation. You cannot say that only dicots show reticulate venation because colophyllum, eryngium are two dicots with reticulate venation. So, that A is definitely wrong. Colophyllum shows parallel venation is right. So, for this the answer is A is correct, but R is false. Definitely only dicots show reticulate venation, only monocots show parallel venation will be a definitely wrong statement. But calophyllum shows parallel venation is a correct statement. Next, this is also a matching. Opposite superposed phyllotaxy. Opposite superposed phyllotaxy means opposite leaves are present one above the other regularly quisqualis. Opposite leaves are present one above the other regularly quisqualis. Alternate phyllotaxy. Alternate phyllotaxy means at each node there will be only one leaf and those two leaves of different nodes are arranged in an alternate manner or spiral manner. So, alternate phyllotaxy is found in hibiscus. Then, opposite decussate phyllotaxy. Opposite decussate phyllotaxy means 
opposite leaves are arranged in right angles with each other that means suppose here one opposite leaf in right angles to the first pair of opposite leaves the second pair are present again above pair is right angles to this pair for this the example is calotropis for this the example is calotropis next next leaf mosaic phyllotaxy leaf mosaic phyllotaxy is found in leaf mosaic phyllotaxy is found in acalypha what is leaf mosaic phyllotaxy it is an alternate type of phyllotaxy but all the leaves get equal amount of sunshine why because lower leaves show long petioles upper leaves show short petioles lower leaves show broad leaves upper leaves show small leaves the upper small leaves are arranged in the gaps left by lower large leaf that way all the leaves are arranged in such a manner that all the leaves get equal amount of sunshine so for this the answer is 5 3 2 1 opposite superposed phyllotaxy is found in quispalis alternate phyllotaxy is found in hibiscus opposite decussate phyllotaxy is found in calotropis and leaf mosaic phyllotaxy is found in acalypha in this there is one fourth one nerium there the phyllotaxy is whorled phyllotaxy what is whorled phyllotaxy the plant shows nodes and on the nodes more than two leaves are present so this is about this question next arrange the leaves of following plants in ascending manner according to their number of midribs midwins the answer is b a d c why because b is mangifera only one midrib cinnamomum many midribs but just more than that cucurbita a little bit more and boraces are many so answer is b a d c mangifera only one midrib cinnamomum reticulate venation that's why limited number of midribs all arranged at the leaf apex cucurbita many midribs which enter their individual lobes and finally boraces many midribs which and if that is palmately divergent where many midribs are present so answer is first mangifera next cinnamomum third cucurbita and last boraces next assertion all monocot leaves do not show parallel venation all monocot leaves do not show parallel venation reason smilax and dioscorea are monocots with reticulate venation so because all monocot leaves do not show parallel venation only that statement is true because smilax and dioscorea are two monocots with reticulate venation smilax and dioscorea are two monocots with reticulate venation so for this the answer will be definitely one a and r are correct r is the correct explanation of a a and r are correct r is the correct explanation of a next one of the following is not a leaf modification of xerophytes one of the following is not a leaf modification of xerophytes spines are leaf modifications that reduce the rate of photosynthesis scales are the leaf modifications that reduce the rate of photosynthesis and also protects the apical and axillary buds phyllodes any part of the leaf except leaf lamina any part of the leaf except leaf lamina suppose modifies into a broad expanded green chlorophyllous photosynthetic structure then it is called a phyllode so all these three are definitely xerophytic adaptations the only answer here is tendril tendril is not a xerophytic adaptation tendril is found in almost major many plants and it mainly helps in climbing so spines scales phyllodes are xerophytic adaptations tendril is not a xerophytic adaptation because tendrils are formed from roots tendrils are formed from leaves tendrils are formed from stem and all tendrils help in climbing the support so here the answer is tendrils next opposite decussate and opposite superposed phyllotaxy are rep respectively present in opposite decussate just now i told opposite decussate is found in calotropis because here the opposite leaves are arranged in right angles to each other then opposite superposed phyllotaxy is found in quisqualis so the for this the answer is calotropis and quisqualis second is also quisqualis and calotropis that is not the answer because first is opposite decussate then is superposed so you must be careful during the mcet exam both the 1 and 2 are correct here but 
order is different the question is opposite decussate and superpose so first you have to write the opposite decussate that is calotropis then opposite superpose that is quisqualis you should not write quisqualis and calotropis then nerium just now i told hold philotaxy quisqualis opposite superposed philotaxy calotropis opposite decussate philotaxy nerium hold philotaxy so question reading is very important what is the question given opposite decussate and superposed philotaxis so first you have to identify the opposite decussate philotaxy then you have to identify the opposite superpose so answer is opposite decussate will be in calotropis opposite superposed will be in quisqualis next digestive glands are present at the apices of the tentacles in digestive glands are present at the apices of the tentacles in drosera drosera is very popularly called sun dew plant in this sun dew plant leaf is spatulate spatulate means spoon shaped leaves on this spatulate leaves you will find many glandular tentacles many hundreds and hundreds of glandular tentacles they secrete digestive juices when an insect comes and sits on the spatulate leaf all these tentacles close kills the insects secrete the juices and ultimately digest the insects so digestive glands are present at the apices of the tentacles in drosera coming to dionia 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 is very popularly called venus fly trap here the insectivorous plant has a leaf which functions like a book that means when an insect comes and sits on it the leaves will close and ultimately kills the insects utricularia utricularia is popularly called bladderwort here bladder like structure is present insects are trapped there and killed there then nepenthes nepenthes you all know pitcher plant the pitcher is a leaf lamina modification lid attracts the insects they fell into the pitcher as fell into the acidic fluid killed there and the protein part of the insects body is digest so digestive glands present at the apices of tentacles is drosera next scaly leaves are found in scaly leaves means the leaves which are found either in the xerophytic plants or in the underground stem modifications in xerophytic plants they reduce the rate of transpiration in underground stem modifications they provide protection to the apical bud and axillary bud here the answers are canna indica colocasia stachys tubifera lilium canna indica the underground stem modification is a rhizome colocasia the underground stem modification is a com stachys tubifera the underground stem modification is a tuberous stem and in lilium the underground stem modification is a bulb in canna rhizome in colocasia com in stachys tubifera tuber in lilium bulb scale leaves are definitely present because underground stem modifications are identified by the presence of apical bud axillary bud nodes internodes and scale leaves so answer will be 1 2 3 4 all are the answers for this question so all 1 2 3 4 next non succulent phylloclads with scale leaves in hold phyllotaxy non succulent phylloclad means it does not store food material it appears like a long needle like structure so long needle like structure with a whorl of scale leaves around each node whorl of scale leaves around each node is casuarina is casuarina so casuarina shows long needle like phylloclads these are all non succulent which does not store any food around each node you will find a circlet a whorl a circlet of scale leaves so answer is casuarina in the case of nerium you don't find any scale leaves in the case of euphorbia also leaves are modified into spines leaves are modified into spines and when it come to the last one cocoloba cocoloba is a phylloclad but it is a broad expanded ribbon shaped phylloclad which is very much branched so here non succulent phylloclads with scale leaves and hold phyllotaxy in a hold phyllotaxy is definitely casuarina why because in casuarina long needle like phyllocladds are present around each node you will find a circlet circlet of leaflets is nothing but hold phyllotaxy so for this the answer is 3 the answer for this is 3 then arrange the following in descending order based on the number of leaflets based on the number of leaflets answer is 4 a c d b why because six leaves of citrus means six six leaf of citrus means six 
वन लीफ ऑफ गाइनाड्रॉपिस मीन्स फाइव सो सिक्स लीव ऑफ सिट्रस इज सिक्स वन लीफ ऑफ गाइनाड्रॉपिस इज फाइव वाई बिकॉज इन गाइनाड्रॉपिस पेंट ऑफ फोलिएटली कॉम्पाउंड लीव आर प्रेजेंट देन टू लीव ऑफ हार्डविकिया इज फोर बिकॉज हार्डविकिया इज बाई फोलिएटली कॉम्पाउंड लीव एंड लास्ट one leaf of gynan one leaf of dolicus one leaf of dolicus is 3 one leaf of dolicus is 3 so answer will be a c d b i will again tell citrus six leaves means six leaves gynandrops is five leaves then two leaves of hardwickia is four why because hardwickia is bifoliately compound and one leaf of dolicus is three so answer is 6 5 4 3 that is the descending order and descending order 6 5 4 3 is for fourth option a c d b a means six leaves of citrus c means one leaf of gynandropsis d means two leaves of hardwickia and b means one leaf of dolicus this is the answer next compound leaf without a rachis compound leaf without a rachis is seen in tamarindus marsilia millingtonia and moringa here the answer is marsilia why because marsilia shows compound leaves not pinnately compound it shows palmately compound leaves palmately compound means at the tip of the petiole leaflets are arranged so rachis will not be there only petiole will be there at the tip of the petiole you will find four leaflets so four leaflets present at the tip of the petiole not at the tip of the rachis so here it cannot be called as rachis it is a petiole so at the tip of the petiole four leaflets are found in marsilia here the remaining options are tamarindus just now i told tamarindus is unipinnately compound leaves with even number of leaflets that is paripinnately compound leaves primary rachis always ends with two leaflets then millingtonia just now i told moringa and millingtonia are the examples of tri pinnately compound leaves primary rachis produce second rachis second rachis produce tertiary rachis tertiary rachis produce leaflets on both sides that is millingtonia and moringa both are same next parkinsonia the number of leaf spines present at each node this is the parkinsonia plant parkinsonia shows a phyllod phyllod is modified from secondary rachis second rachis is modified into phyllod on both sides of the phyllod leaflets will be there but ultimately leaf rats fall off ultimately phyllod perform photosynthesis primary rachis becomes a spine stipules also becomes spines so when primary rachis and stipules are modified into spines two stipules become two spines primary rachis becomes one spine so in total in parkinsonia total number of spines at each node will be 3 so definitely three spines are present in parkinsonia why i just now explained primary rachis becomes a spine stipules become two spines second rachis becomes a phyllod and phyllod perform photosynthesis so three spines are present the original stem is underground and the aerial leaves show unicostate parallel venation in the case of original stem is underground is rhizome in mangifera you don't find unicostate in cucurbita you don't find unicostate and in the case of cinnamoma you don't find unicostate that means parallel venation is not found mangifera musa and cinnamomum show reticulate venation so mangifera cucurbita and cinnamomum shows reticulate venation only musa shows parallel venation with that also you can identify the answer the original stem is an underground means actual stem is underground rhizome the aerial stem is formed by the fusion of sheathing leaf bases so ultimately that is called pseudo stem so the answer the original stem is underground and the aerial leaf show unicostate parallel venation is case of musa unicostate parallel venation means only one midrib will be there and the leaf lamina shows venesh one after the other so this is unicostate parallel venesh unicostate parallel venation underground stem is found in musa find out the correct match smilax for this the answer is 3 a3 stipe smilax part modified into tendril this is a smilax stipules are modified into tendrils lateris total leaf except stipules are modified into tendrils total leaf except stipules are modified into tendrils why because stipules are broad expanded leaf like stipules which perform photosynthesis gloriosa leaf apex is modified into tendril 
leaf apex is modified into tendril. Nepenthe is upper part of the petiole is modified into tendril. So, smilax stipules are modified into tendrils. Lathyrus total leaf except stipules are modified into tendril because stipules are broad expanded leaf like stipules. Lathyrus I told gloriosa leaf apex or stipules or leaf apex is modified in tendril and nepenthes upper part of the petiole is modified in tendril. So, answer is A3, B4, C5, D1. Then with regard to Parkinsonia, the correct things are bipinnately compound leaf, definitely bipinnately compound leaf because primary rachis is formed, second rachis is formed and both sides of the second rachis leaflets are arranged. <coughs> secondary rachis are fillouts. Definitely secondary rachis is modified into a fillout. Primary rachis is modified into a spine. Definitely primary rachis is modified into a spine. Stipules are spinous. Stipules are modified into spine. So, all the four are correct. 1, 2, 3, 4. All are correct regard Parkinsonia example. That means the answer for this question is 3. Next. The number of primary rachis present in each of Delonyx rhizia and Millingtonia. Primary rachis in Delonyx, primary rachis in Millingtonia will be 1 because primary rachis produce secondary rachis, secondary rachis bears leaflets in the case of Delonyx. Primary rachis produce secondary rachis, secondary rachis produce tertiary rachis, tertiary rachis bears leaflets in the case of Millingtonia. So, primary rachis number will be 1 in Delonyx and 1 in Millingtonia. So, answer is 1 and 1. Arrange the following in ascending order based on the number of rachi per leaflet. Based on the rachi per leaflet. For this the answer is B, D, C, A. Azad recta only first rachis, Delonyx two rachi, Moringa many three rachis and Coriandra many rachi. Just now this question is asked and explained. Next. Arrange the following descent order based on the number of leaflet. Six leaves in citrus. One leaf in Dolichus, one leaf in Gynotropsis, two leaves in Hardwickia. Answer is ACBD. Next, ACDB. Arrange the following modified parts of different examples from base to apex of leaf. From base to apex of leaf. Base to apex of leaf is DACB. Why? Because D, tendrils in Smilax has come from stipules. Tendrils in Smilax has come from stipules. A, tendril in Clematis has come from petiole. Tendrillin clematis has come from petiole. So, stipules will be at the base. Next is petiole. Then C. Pitcher in nepenthes. Pitcher in nepenthes has come from leaf lamina. Total leaf lamina is modified into a pitcher in nepenthes. And finally, B. Tendrillin gloriosa has come from leaf apex. So, first lower portion that is stipules, then petiole, then leaf lamina, then leaf apex. This is from base to apex. So, answer is D A C B D is tendrillin smilax which come from stipules, A is tendrillin clematis which come from petiole, C is pitcher in nepenthes where the total leaf lamina becomes a pitcher and tendrillin gloriosa has come from leaf apex. So, arrange the following modified parts in different examples from base to apex of a leaf is D A C B tendrils in smilax, tendrillin clematis, tendrillin sorry pitcher in nepenthes and tendrillin gloriosa. <coughs> Arrange the modified parts of a leaf in Nepenthes from base to apex. Base to apex is wing like structure will be at the first. So, answer is C A D B. Answer is C A D B. <coughs> Next, if there are four pairs of leaves at four nodes in Calotropis, listen carefully. If there are four pairs of leaves at four nodes in Calotropis, the leaves which are arranged in the same plane are first and that means second and third nodes. Second and uh, three are the answers. Second and fourth node, first and third nodes. Why? Because in the first and third nodes they are arranged in a supermosed manner. In second and fourth nodes they are arranged in a supermosed manner, but right angles to the first and third nodes. First and third nodes. So arranged in the same plane are two and three. Second and fourth node, first and third node, four pairs of leaves. At four nodes of kilotropis, this shows opposite decussate philotaxy. Next, one of the following is not a modification in xerophytes tendril. Just now I told spine scales fillouts all are xerophytic modifications, but for tendrils. Next, 
monocot having reticulate venation and tendrilar stipules. Monocot having reticulate venation and tendrilar stipules is smilax because Dioscoria is a plant where vegetative bud, vegetative bud that means bud in the axils of the leaves, bud in the axils of the leaves are modified into bulbils. Then Drosera, just now I told, sundew plant with uh, tentacles. Agave Americana. Agave Americana. Agave Americana is a plant with both bulbils and offsets. The only terrestrial plant with offsets is Agave Americana. It also shows bulbils. So, vegetative bud in the axils of the leaves becomes a bulbil in Dioscoria. In the case of Drosera, glandular tentacles will be there. In the case of America, Agave Americana, you will find two options. One is both bulbils and offsets. So, answer for this is Smilax. Then leaflets are present on ultimate branches of irregularly divided latches. Leaflets are present on ultimate branches means it is very much branch and very much dissected leaflets are present at the tip. For this, the answer is coriandrum. This is also called D compound leaf. It is also very popularly called D compound leaf. Moringa tripinately compound leaf. So, options I will tell answers also. Moringa tripinately compound leaves, Delonyx bipinately compound leaves, Coriandrum multipinately compound leaves or D compound leaves. Next, opposite decussate superposed phyllotaxis are recently found in Chelodropis and Quisqualis. In a palmately lobed dicot leaf, the type of venation will be, in a palmately lobed dicot leaf means, the leaf lobes in a leaf lamina resembles fingers in a palm like this. This is a palmately lobed dicot leaf. So, if many midribs are there, all the midribs ultimately enter their independent lobes. All the midribs will definitely enter their independent slopes. So, definitely the answer for this is multicostate reticulate divergent venation. Multicostate means leaf lamina shows many midribs. Reticulate means lateral veins and veinlets are appear in the form of a network. Divergent means they ultimately enter divide at the leaf apex and enter their independent lobes. So, multicostate parallel divergent is boracis but it is not a palmate lobed dicot leaf. Multicostate palmately con parallel convergent is found in rices. It is all rice maize zover. It is also not a dicot. Multicostate reticulate convergent. It is found in dicot, but not in this plant that is palmate lobed dicot leaf. It is found in other plants. Next, digestive glands are present at the tip of the tentacles in Drosera. Drosera. They are present in a pitcher in Nepenthes, they are present in a bladder in Utricularia and they are present at the tip of the tentacles in Drosera. Next, non-succulent phylloclad with scale leaves in whole phyllotaxy, just now I told Cashodena. These are all very important bits, that is why I am some of the are repeating. Next, the total number of leaflets found in together in 4 leaves of Marsilia. 4 leaves of Marsilia means 4 into 4, 16. 10 leaves of dolichus. 10 leaves of dolichus means 10 into 3, 30. Then 5 leaves of gynandropsis. 5 leaves of gynandropsis means 5 into 5, 25. And 2 leaves of hardivikia. 2 leaves of hardivikia means 2 into 2, 4. And 7 leaves of cetrus. 7 into 1, 7. So th the answer will be 82. The answer will be 82 for this. I will repeat this question. I will repeat this question. The total number of leaflets found together in 4 leaves of Marsilia. Marsilia is a tetrafoliately compound leaf. So, 4 into 4, 16 leaves. 10 leaves of Dolichus. Dolichus is a trifoliately compound leaf. 10 into 3, 30. 5 leaves of Gynandropsis. Gynandropsis is pentafoliately compound leaf. 5 into 5, 25. 2 leaves of Hardivikia. Hardivikia is bifoliately compound leaf. 2 into 2, 4. And 7 leaves of citrus. Citrus is unifoliately compound leaf 7 into 1, 7. So, answer will be 82. Together, 82 leaves are present. Next, uneven number of leaflets on unbranched rachis is found in. Uneven number of leaflets means 
primary rachis bears leaflets on both sides when primary rachis bears leaflets on both sides in the case of capsia and tamarindus rachis always ends with one two leaflets so it is paripinnate in the case of azad recta it always ends with one leaflet whenever it one ends with one leaflet definitely it is imparipinately compound so imparipinnately compound leaves are found in azad recta so uneven number of leaflets on unbranched rachis is seen in azad recta next compound leaf without rachis compound leaf without rachis just now i told marsilia where the petiole at the tip of the petiole you will find in tamarindus you will find tertiary rachis in millingtonia in tamarindus you will find primer rachis in millingtonia you will find tertiary rachis in moringa you will find tertiary rachis in marsilia you don't find any rachis leaflets are present at the tip of the petiole plants with photosynthetic primary rachis plants with photosynthetic primary rachis means phyllodes we have to explain any part of the leaf any part of the leaf except leaf lamina if modifies into a green expanded photosynthetic leaf like structure then it is called a phyllode then it is called a phyllode phyllodes are found in two types of plants one is acacia melanoxylon the other is parkinsonia aculeata acacia melanoxylon parkinsonia aculeata in acacia melanoxylon bipinnately compound leaves are present in parkinsonia also bipinnately compound leaves are present in bipinnately compound leaves of prime acacia the primary rachis modifies into a phyllode the primary rachis modifies into a phyllode it bears secondary rachis which bears leaflet it contains secondary rachis which bears leaflet but gradually secondary rachis leaflets everything fall off only primary rachis perform photosynthesis only primary rachis perform photosynthesis in parkinsonia also bipinnately compound leaves primary rachis becomes a spine secondary rachis becomes a phyllode which performs photosynthesis and stipules also become spines selaginella here is a pteridophytic plant artocarpus is a plant with compound fruit and acacia is the answer dolichus just now i told trifoliately compound leaves are present in dolichus so plant with photosynthetic primary rachis is acacia primary rachis are petiole branched stipules are found in what are stipules two small leaf like structures present at the base of the leaf are stipules normally stipules fall off before the leaf expands those stipules are called as deciduous stipules so stipules fall off before the expansion of leaf deciduous stipules the best example for this is mycelia mycelia shows deciduous stipules then persistent stipules persistent stipules means stipules remain even after the expansion of leaf lamina persistent stipules are found in lathyrus pisum here the stipules perform photosynthesis now normally stipules are very simple but stipules are very much branched in ipomia quamoclete stipules are very much branched in ipomia quamoclete so what are stipules two small leaf like structures present at the leaf base and on both sides of the leaf base at the base of the petiole every stipule in many plant stipules fall off before the expansion of the leaf they are called deciduous stipules deciduous stipules are found in mycelia in some plant stipules remain even after the expansion of the leaves they are called as persistent stipules example lathyrus and pisum and in some plants stipules are very much branched and those branched stipules are found in ipomia quamoclete here ipomia batatas is there ipomia batatas is a special root why single adventitious roots become tuberous ipomia quisqualis is not there ipomia indica is not there ipomia quamoclete shows branched stipules next 
in millingtonia the leaflets are mainly arranged in millingtonia millingtonia shows first a primary rachis on this primary rachis slowly secondary rachis are produced on this secondary rachis slowly tertiary rachis are produced secondary rachis and tertiary rachis are produced leaflets are arranged on both sides of the tertiary rachis leaflets are arranged on both sides of the tertiary rachis that's why these are popularly called tri pinnately compound leaves tri pinnately compound leaves so rachis are second primary secondary and tertiary so leaflets are arranged on both sides of the tertiary rachis in the case of millingtonia there are some other options we explain that also first option is primary rachis leaflets are arranged on both sides of the primary rachis in the case of just now i told peripinnate and imperipinnate secondary rachis delonyx and cassia many divided rachis it is found in coriandrum sativum and special feature of APACR umbelliferae next insectivorous leaves that help in carbon assimilation and mechanical support are seen in insectivorous leaves that helps helps in carbon assimilation and mechanical support just now i told the lower portion of the petiole is modified into a green expanded leaf like structure which cannot which can be regarded as phyllode that perform photosynthesis the upper part of the petiole is modified into highly coiled watch spring like structure called tendril so watch spring like structure called tendril so the leaf insectivorous leaves insectivorous leaves means nepenthes smilax is not an insectivorous plant clematis is not an insectivorous plant lathyrus is not an insectivorous plant here insectivorous plant is only nepenthes and in this nepenthes some portion of the petiole helps in carbon assimilation some portion of the petiole helps in carbon assimilation that is lower portion of the petiole broad expanded leaf like phyllode upper portion of the petiole becomes highly coiled tendril like structure that helps in climbing so mechanical support and carbon assimilation both are found in <coughs> both are found in nepenthes so like this some of the important bits we discuss so in the leaf very important aspects are first part of the leaves part of the leaves means petiole stipule everything then another important bit is and it coming to closely caduca stipules found in mycelia persistent stipules are found in lathyrus and pisum branched stipules are found in ipomea quamoclet after that petiole petiole is the stalk of the leaf a leaf with a petiole is petiolate without a petiole is sessile then leaf lamina broad expanded portion which performs a special special photosynthesis transpiration everything is called leaf lamina leaf lamina also performs photosynthesis then comes venation venation in plants is reticulate venation parallel venation reticulate venation is found in dicots parallel venation is found in monocots reticulate venation showing monocots are smilax and dioscorea parallel venation showing dicots are calophyllum and eryngium pinnately reticulate palmately reticulate palmately reticulate convergent and palmately reticulate divergent then palmately parallel divergent palmately parallel convergent then next comes we discussed about types of leaves types of leaves means types of leaves simple leaves types of leaves simple leaves compound leaves simple leaves means the total leaf lamina is entire leaf lamina is entire which is not at all divided into leaflets compound leaves means leaflets are present simple leaf unlobed leaves simple lobed leaves simple unlobed leaves and simple lobed leaves then we discussed about leaf with important axis then in the leaf we have to read about phyllotaxy alternate phyllotaxy opposite phyllotaxy hold phyllotaxy then we have to discuss about after phyllotaxy modifications there are there are six types of modifications one is tendril the other is spine the other is uh, what you called uh, scales then there are some important aspects like uh, 
phyllodes, reproductive leaves. Reproductive leaves are found in bryophyllum, where the epiphyllous buds are present in the notches of leaf lamina. Scylla, lipiphyllous buds are present at the leaf apex. Then begonia, epiphyllous buds are formed on the wounds of the leaf lamina. Then comes modifications. So, last trap leaves. Trap leaves means they are found in insectivorous plants. Insectivorous plants they are present and drosera and other things. So, after the leaf, the next chapter is inflorescence. After the leaves, the next chapter is inflorescence. So, we discussed what is a leaf, important regarding important aspects regarding leaf and we also discussed some important bits. Some of the bits are very, very important that is why we have repeated those bits. Then those bits are repeatedly asked in many MSET exams like AFMC, AIMS and something like that. That is why some of the questions are repeated and why they are repeated because they are given in exams several times.